Good morning, and welcome to Riviera Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us today on this beautiful Sunday morning. For our opening song, let us together sing number 298 in the hymnal, Lord, You Give the Great Commission. We'll sing the first two verses. I'm Missy Shiverick and I'm the pastor at Riviera Presbyterian Church in Miami, Florida. Riviera is a progressive congregation whose firm foundational belief is that all are God's beloved children and that there are absolutely no exceptions to that rule. Today we're going to be blessing backpacks and briefcases. So if you're not sitting right next to your backpack or your briefcase, go and get it now because you'll want to lay your hand on it during the blessing. If you are a visitor with us this morning, welcome. We are worshiping online out of our love for you and out of our love for each other. And we look forward to the day when we can be together again and meet you. But until then, if you would scroll down on the worship bullet, you will find a place that you can sign in. And you can even tell us a little bit about yourself. And if you have a prayer concern, please put it down. We have an active prayer ministry in the church, and we will hold your concerns in our prayers throughout the week. Let us worship God. Oh God, we come to worship you so that you can lead us into life in all its fullness. Help us to worship with all we are and have. Let our laughter and our tears be instruments of prayer. Let our loves and our delights color our world and our worship with color and sound. Make our doubt the clay from which we shape our faith. Let our fears boil within us until they emerge as shining hope. And let the light of the world be born within us 
until we radiate your love to the world. Call to confession. Too often our hearts are cold and without gratitude. Too often our hands are passive and unwilling to go carry out acts of mercy. Too often our lips are pursed tightly, unwilling to speak words of love. Too often we are separated and alienated from our better self, separated and alienated from God. Let us confess our separation and alienation. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Prayer, prayer of confession. confession. O, o Lord, Lord our God, you call us to work for a world where all will be fed and have dignity, but we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace, but we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring liberty to the oppressed, but we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, O Lord. Turn us to your will by the power of the Spirit, so that all may know justice and peace. Amen. Assurance of pardon. God says to us, you are my chosen ones. I love you. I am proud of you. Stand firm in your renewed commitment. Know that I have forgiven you and will stand by you in all times and in all places. Dare to live fully the life to which I have called you. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to new life. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's children's sermon. Today we're gonna to talk about book bags. In my book bag, I keep markers, highlighters, writing implements, writing tools. I also keep notebooks. I keep a book and I keep my laptop. All of these tools help me to do my job. All of these tools equip me to make sure that I am serving God and you, which is pretty cool. These tools are what I need to make sure that I have a good work year. But guess what else equips us to have a good year? If you guessed prayer, you are correct. In a little bit, Missy is going to bless our book bags. And the blessing of the book bag is really just a prayer. It's a prayer where we thank God for our teachers and our school supplies. And it's also a prayer where we are reminded that God is helping us grow and learn this year and that God is with us. And that's pretty important because sometimes school can be hard and scary. I remember doing fractions and math in <laughs> any grade and that wasn't very easy for me. So I wish I would have had a prayer like the blessings of the backpack to remember that God is with me, that God is helping me out, that God is helping me to learn. So maybe something you can do is print out the blessing of the backpack and put it either inside a notebook, a folder, maybe in a locker, maybe on a bulletin board, on your fridge. That way throughout the year, you can be reminded for the blessing that Missy, your church and God gave you for the school year to learn and grow and to be thankful for friends and teachers and school supplies. So my friends, I hope you have your book bag with you. And if you don't, go get it quickly. That way it can be blessed. And then hopefully I can see everyone's book bags in the Zoom call afterwards. Because let's be honest, I still love school supplies and backpacks a lot, which is why I still use one. So I can't wait to see yours. Well, my friends, I pray and hope that you have a wonderful school year, that you learn and grow and make new friends, and that may you always, always, always remember that God is with you this school year. I will see you in the Zoom call. Take care, my wonderful friends. Bye. Hi, everyone. I am sitting here with the 64 backpacks.
that we are contributing to Francis Tucker Elementary School to the fifth grade class, filled with their supplies to start the school year because of your generosity and uh, promoting it. And so I want you to um, get a hold of your backpacks and our briefcases or whatever, whatever it is that you take to work and put your hand over them as I put my hand over these um, beautiful backpacks and we are going to bless them. Join with me in the litany for the backpack blessing. I invite everyone who has a backpack, a briefcase, or a book bag in which you carry to work to get it now and place your hand on it as we bless them. Many of you will start school this week and for most of you it will have to be online for the time being. And even if going to school is just sitting at a table in your home, our backpacks contain the things we need for school and for learning. Gracious God, each day you provide for all of our needs and you keep us in the palm of your hand. We have also collected backpacks for the 54 children in the fifth grade class at Francis Tucker Elementary School so that they too can have a great start to their school year. We also ask God's blessing on these children as they begin their school year. God, we pray for children everywhere beginning school, and we pray for the day when all are given an equal education and a firm foundation for life. Even in this pandemic, we thank God for all good things provided for us. Let us join in praise and thanksgiving for pens, pencils, crayons, and markers, let us give thanks. Thanks be to God. For notebooks, paper and folders, calculators and student planners, and the backpacks that hold them all. Thanks be to God. For each of our children and for the many different talents and gifts, for their insights and desires to learn and to ask questions, for all teachers, custodians, principals, secretaries, and librarians, let us give thanks. Thanks be to God for these backpacks filled with school supplies that we will give to the fifth grade class at Francis Tucker Elementary School who need them just as we do, for their chance to learn and grow just like us, and for the love in which you hold all children going to school each day, let us give thanks. Bless, O oh God, these backpacks and the children who carry them. We thank you for the resources and school supplies that help children and students of all ages learn. Bless these children and the children in our extended community and persons in all places who seek to learn and grow. Amen. Lord our God, your name and your word are exalted above everything. We are listening for your word. We are looking for your light. By the power and the Holy Spirit, renew our minds and hearts. So we will discern your will and respond in faith. Amen. <laughs>
In one of the churches I previously served, we came up with an evangelism plan. At the annual meeting where the budget is discussed, we would give a St. Paul the Evangelist Award to the member who invited and brought to church more guests during the past years. And one year, I received it, but I had to relinquish it because I knew the numbers were a little skewed at, because I had invited my entire family to come. They were having a family reunion to come the, sun, the Sunday of the reunion. But the title of the award was accurate. St. Paul, the Evangelist. If there's one person who we can attribute to moving Christianity from a small sect, an offshoot of Judaism in a church in Jerusalem, to a worldwide religion, it is Paul, whose missionary journeys are accounted for in the book of Acts. And today we'll talk a little about the, the chapters of the books where Paul continues his journeys this time throughout much of the cities along the Mediterranean Sea east of Italy. Not only does Paul visit the communities of Christians he formed in his previous journey, but he travels as far north as Philippi and as far west as Athens and Corinth. And as he did, he learned how to adapt the culture of the people to whom he preached his sermons. He had to learn that instead of negating their religion and their culture and their background, he needed to find ways to convert the people to Christianity while not offending them or by not offending them too much. And probably the best example of this is in the 17th chapter of Acts while he's in Athens. It says he was deeply distressed over the many idols. He wisely, but he wisely used these idols to the many gods with small g to preach about the one true God he worshiped in which he believed. So he looks at the idols and he says, beginning in the 22nd verse, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship. I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestors, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth and he allotted their times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed in the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by man who he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection from the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined and became believers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul knew he had good news to share. He looked at the Athenians and their sacrifices to those small gods and he knew they had worshipped fall idols. Just as we can look at our friends and people around us and see their unhappiness in making the wrong things most important and having priorities, false priorities, which will only lead to misery and loss. Paul looked at these people and wanted them to know the good news he came to share. 
He pointed that his God was beyond our total grasp, beyond of our control. He, God was around before time and created all that we know. Paul's God, our God, was the one God from whom all the rest of the world came. Paul was brilliant in his approach. You don't make converts by telling someone that they're ignorant, but by showing them a better way. And I think about the church today and how some people think it's a dying institution. Mainline Christianity, Christianity diminishes in its membership each year, and why? We here at Riviera know that we might not have gotten through these past few months without a church. It has been a lifeline for many of us as we attempt to make sense of and live through this pandemic. And we have continued to live out the ethic of our Lord in the missions of our church in this time of an economic downturn when so many people are out of work or are underemployed. We can offer food, we can offer school supplies, and we can offer hope and love to a hurting world. Just like Paul, our message is bigger than what others are sinking into. We can point to a God of total love, and God knows no boundaries in acceptance. And a God who never abandons, but who sent God's own son so that we might know God so intimately as a child knows the love of a parent. Somehow, we need to get the world out, as Paul did. There is good news in our faith. Amen. Prayers of the people. God of all, we thank you for hearing these prayers. For the human family with whom we share this world. Those closest to us and those whose names we will never know. We give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as your children. We pray especially for those in our Riviera family who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and, and we also pray for all people who have lost loved ones in the pandemics of our day, whether that be to the COVID-19 illness, gun violence, or institutional racism. God, we pray for the world we share with all creation, the plants and animals we see each day and those who live in the wilderness who we have never seen. We give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as stewards of your earth. We pray especially for our fragile planet which is warming day by day and the fragile ecosystem in which we live. As we approach the height of the hurricane season, we pray that this be a mild one. God, we pray for local, national, and international leaders, for those whose policies we appreciate and those with whom we struggle. We give you thanks and ask that you be at their side, guiding them to act in justice and mercy. We pray especially for our country as the election campaigns continue to ramp up their rhetoric. We pray that our country can be unified instead of torn apart by the politics of our day. God, we especially pray for the joys and concerns that occupy our thoughts today, those we have spoken and those we ponder inwardly. We give you thanks and ask that you are at our side, guiding us to recognize that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We pray all this in Christ's name who taught us to pray in this manner. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Riviera is indeed a missional church. It has been very important to us during this pandemic when we are physically separated that we continue our missions. The church has, uh, this week we are going to be dropping off the backpacks that we blessed today, filled with the supplies for the um, 54 student, fifth grade students at Francis Tucker Elementary School. And I hope we get some pictures so that we can show them to you next week. And this Wednesday at 6.30, we will all come together for a discussion on climate change and its effects on South Florida. We are at the epicenter of climate change and it's important that we learn about it and that we also know what we can do to turn this path we're on. Finally, I'm standing in, in front of our food pantry, which is a very important ministry at this time. With, with the economic downturn due to the pandemic. Many people have found themselves unemployed or underemployed and food insecure. And if you are one of those people, please come. Mondays and Wednesday mornings, we're here. We, the groceries are for you. Please come and get your groceries. If you have resources, please help us by donating to our food pantry. It's now time for us to take the morning offering. If you have a home church, please give your gifts and offerings and tithes to your home church. If you are a visitor or you're a member of Riviera, it's time now to consider your gifts to the church. The call to offering. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, bless our offering that it may reach and touch those who hunger those who hurt, those who seek new hope. As part of the global village, we care about all people as all are your children and our siblings. We pray for world peace, for liberty for all, and for joy for those who are weary. In honor of our sovereign Lord, amen. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, the church has never been more alive than it is now. No, we're not together physically, but we are bringing people together. We are sharing love. We are sharing our resources. We are making community in this pandemic. We are being Christ's hands and feet to the world, showing Christ's love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make thy face to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and in life everlasting. Amen. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for being with us today. For our closing song, we sing a great hymn of social justice, number 749, entitled, Come, Live in the Light, also known as We Are Called. Let's sing two verses of number 749 together as one united church. <laughs> 